Hey, I'm Katie Wawa and you're watching The Record Review. Hey, so I know I haven't done one of these videos in a while, I know life just took over, but I wanted to do a September's Most Anticipated because there were so many amazing albums that came out this month. So it's not quite most anticipated of things that are going to come out, that is things that have come out that everyone was looking forward to and I thought that I would talk a little bit about each of those albums. Hopefully if you haven't heard of some of these groups or artists you might want to look them up. But that's enough talking, let's get into the actual records. So first up it's Iron Maiden's hotly anticipated 16th album Book of Souls. that Book of Souls had its release delayed because unfortunately Bruce Dickinson was diagnosed with tongue cancer so the band decided that it would be a good idea to delay the release of the album so that Dickinson could have time to have treatment and then he would recover in time for the early 2016 tour. Book of Souls was recorded in Paris in December last year. Apparently what they did was they would write the songs and then immediately record them so there's a real live improvisational feel to a lot of the songs on the album. This is also Iron Maiden's first double album although on vinyl it's actually a triple LP so it's a long one. The total length of the album is over 19 minutes so it is quite a commitment to listen to it but it is incredible. The album has a real epic feel to it tackling subjects like death and the afterlife so it definitely warrants that longer length. One of the things that I always love about Iron Maiden albums is the artwork, which is so intricate and theatrical. The Book of Souls artwork takes influence from Mayan culture, and Eddie, the band's mascot, is made up as like an ancient Mayan. There's also imagery of human sacrifice, which is really interesting, particularly when the album itself deals with these ideas of death and like death cults and eternity. Next up, we finally got the Libertines comeback album, Anthems for Doomed Youth. Woke up again, to my chagrin. I was so excited when I heard earlier this year that the Libertines were planning this third comeback album. The idea of them reuniting after over 10 years apart is awesome and you know they really capture a certain moment of my adolescence and London life from a particular time. I think they're also the closest that my generation got to actual punk and even though I think they always referred to themselves as garage rock but there's a real crossover there. The video for Gungadin was awesome, it just made me so happy just seeing all of them getting back together again on the streets of London. I was really impressed by the album because the lyrics are still so great. They're as disenfranchised yet secretly hopeful and romantic as ever, with these gorgeous riffs and bass lines and beats underneath them. The whole band just pulls together to make this great music. Fittingly, the album title is also taken from a Wilfred Owen poem. Owen was a war poet and his work really rings true with the Libertines' as subjects, who are often these young men who are unhappy and ultimately, as the title suggests, doomed. Next, it's Lana Del Rey's third album, Honeymoon. So out of all of the albums that came out in September, I think that Honeymoon was one of the most highly anticipated. I actually made a video about everything that we were expecting prior to the album's release, which you can check out right here. Plus me and my friend Sangeeta did a live stream discussing the album on the night that it came out. You can watch that whole 3 hour video as well right here. Overall this is a more surreal and dreamy album than Lana Del Rey's earlier work. I think even from the title you can tell that it's going to be different. Born to Die and Ultra Violence have the idea of violence written into their titles. But Honeymoon is a lot more positive. Like a lot of other people, I was really impressed by Honeymoon and I'm really excited to start delving into the references and ideas behind it when I review the album. This month, Metric released their sixth album, Pagans in Vegas. Pagans in Vegas has more of an electronic, synthy feel to it than Metric's other work, which tends to be more on the indie rock style. Pagans in Vegas feels more new wave. Metric also released an app for the album, similar to the Biophilia app, where you could explore the album. Having listened to Pagans in Vegas, I think that it's a bit hit and miss, but I do think that singer Emily Haynes has the potential to bring such a cool, radical energy to the music that when it works, it really works and it makes it worth it for the rest of the album. Next, let's head over to Mexico for Le Butcherette's album, A Raw Youth. 
The Butcherettes are a Mexican garage punk band and this is their third album. I hadn't heard much of their music before but this forceful, energetic and exciting music that they make is really refreshing and cool. They also incorporate performance art into their music and I would highly recommend this if you're looking for something a bit different from what's popular at the moment. Churches had a lot to live up to this month with their second album, Every Open Eye. I have some pretty big fan of Churches and I previously reviewed their debut album The Bones of What You Believe which you can watch right here. Since their debut Churches had done a couple of soundtrack singles but they hadn't really given much away about what we could expect for the second album and for a lot of artists that second album is quite difficult. Personally I was expecting a lot from Every Open Eye and I'm pleased to say that I was not disappointed. This album is so interesting, it's got this strong yet sweet synth sound to it and it also has some cool dystopic themes built into it which I find really interesting. I think that a lot of fans have also been really impressed by this album and it's really exciting to hear them not just to continue to make the same standard of music that they made in The Bones of What You Believe but also to keep building on that and evolving it into something even better. New Order had another album to offer this month, Music Complete. What can you buy that lifts a heavy heart up to the sky? Music Complete is New Order's 10th studio album. Unfortunately, there's no more Peter Hook on this album. However, New Order did manage to call on some interesting guests like Iggy Pop, Brandon Flowers, and Ellie Jackson from LaRue. In the lead up to Music Complete's release, there seemed to be a lot of negativity and worrying that the band could never really live up to their incredible legacy. And I do think that that's true. I think that the idea that New Order could produce an album or even a track now that could rival Blue Monday is just not going to happen. However, I don't think that Music Complete is as bad as people seem to think it is. I mean, we're comparing it to Joy Division and New Order's early work. It's never going to be quite the same thing. It's never going to be from quite the same moment. And I do think it's a pretty well put together album. It's enjoyable, they seem to be trying new things, incorporating new guests. And I think that if it was coming from any band other than New Order or a new band and this was their debut, I think that people would have a lot more interest in it and respect for it. Now it's time for something completely different. Girl Band's debut album, Holding Hands with Jamie. So girl band are not a girl band. <laughs> they are an all male Irish noise punk band. As I said, this is their debut album and I was trying to think of anyone to compare them to but I can't think of anyone that would make sense. They sound completely different to anything else that is being played right now, but they are signed to Rough Trade Record and there seem to be a lot of interest in them at the moment, so I wonder whether there'll be more bands coming up like them. They have some really interesting music videos as well that are sort of cool and lo-fi and weird. They remind me of early Blur videos. The only way that I can think of to describe their music is that they sound how I feel when I watch the news. It's incredible though, it's really interesting music. Interestingly, this album is not only being released on CD and vinyl and download, but it is also being released on cassette. And this is part of the limited releases for Cassette Store Day on October 17th. This is one of those albums that I actually think I would prefer to own on tape than vinyl because it does have such a lo-fi sound. Next, Peaches is back with her sixth album, Rub. Are you ready? I was surprised to realise it had been six years since 2009's I Feel Cream and I realised that I had really missed Peaches. Peaches is releasing Rub on a new label and it's a really weirdly awesome album. It's quite experimental, it's doing things that maybe no one else would think to do. The album features some amazing guests like Feist, Kim Gordon and Margaret Cho. She actually released the whole album as a series of YouTube videos on her channel which are really odd and grotesque and cool. Peaches is one of those artists who's quite different from anything going on around her and she seems to just have this through line of what she's interested in making. Finally, there's a fascinating project in the self-titled debut from Sex Witch. 
So Sex Witch is the newest project from Natasha Khan of Bat for Lashes, and she's collaborating with the band Toy and also producer Dan Carey. Apparently they first met when they were working on a cover of The Bride, which was a pre-revolution Iranian folk song. I think this project is really interesting and I think it deserves a lot more attention than it's getting. It's a six track LP composed of covers of 1970s psychedelic and folk songs from around the world, countries like Thailand, Morocco, Iran, and the USA. As an example, the single Halelios is from pre-revolution Iran. It has these dreamy, otherworldly vocals from Khan. And that folkloric quality is something that I've always really enjoyed about Khan's music. Not just the lyrics themselves, but also the way that she uses her vocals to tell stories is something that I find really interesting. And I really love hearing her explore this music with Toy because it gives us an idea about what inspires her and what might influence the music that she's made. Sex Witch's debut is a bit more difficult to get hold of, so I'm going to have to try and track that down on vinyl, but it does sound amazing. So that's everything that I was looking forward to in September. Please do let me know in the comments if I missed anyone out or also what you thought of these albums. I've made a playlist of singles from these albums and so if you want to check that out there'll be a link in the end card and in the description below. And if you're not already subscribed to me and you would like to get alerts when I release new videos then be sure to click subscribe. Otherwise thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!